Ladies and gentlemen, hello, how are you today? I was just deciding I wanted to do a little deck tech, um, just for the fun of it. I have the Legacy Blue White Miracles built. Um, it is my favorite deck. It is a deck I always, always wanted to play. Um, I'm still learning the format. I'm still learning this deck. It's very, very interesting to play. I've, I've made some choices of my own that have, I think, made the deck inferior. Um, and I think that might need to change at some point in the future here, but just wanted to go over some basic stuff. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Legacy, uh, it is a format of Magic where you can play any cards printed, um, from all the way back from Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, Revised, all the way up to the current standard set, War of the Spark. Um, you also get to play with stuff in supplemental sets like Commander-only cards that were printed in the pre-built Commander decks, um, stuff from Battle Bond, Conspiracy, um, so a lot of a lot of a really really obnoxiously big card pool. Um, some people will say it's the true format, the true way to play Magic. Um, that's debatable, but anyway, uh, my camera's tilting on me here. Let me try to fix that a little bit. My uh, crappy little tripod is not exactly up to snuff quality wise. Well, let's see if that holds. Anyway, so anyway. The way the deck works is it's basically as close to draw, go, control as you can get. Um, you do have threats. You have cards like Monastery Mentor, um, which allow you to try to win a game on the spot almost out of nowhere. You have you beat downs with Snapcaster Mage. I have Venser in my deck, um, along with Caracas, to facilitate a combo where you're able to bounce a spell or permanent with Venser, and then you can use Karakas to return him to your hand and then just kind of loop back and forth. It's not a very reliable thing to do. It's very fringe. It's very wonky. But when it works, it is a way to surefire, way to just completely lock your opponent out of the game. Um, you also have... Uh, I have Gideon as a one of in my deck. It's just very powerful. I, I, I feel it's a great card. Um, it does lose to simple things like Swords to Plowshares and Path to Exile and stuff, but I mean, what doesn't? Um, I play two copies of Jace the Mind Sculptor in my deck. I feel that he is just the ultimate way to close out the game. There are some changes with the new War of the Spark set that came out. There was that Narset Planeswalker. I haven't looked into it yet. I, I probably will make some changes. I consider trying that card out. Um, she's apparently very powerful in Legacy and Vintage especially, um, and even in like Commander and stuff, but... Anyway, I play two copies of Counterbalance. Um, I like the card, even though top's no longer a thing. I still think it's very powerful. Uh, the fact that you get to counter anyone's spell if your mana costs on top of your deck is the same is very powerful. Without top, it is weaker. Um, there are some times where I just want to board this in, out for game two and three. It still does a lot, though. Uh, by the way, I apologize. My sleeves are exceptionally dirty because I'm about to re-sleeve this. Um, the card's still very powerful, though. It's hard for me to argue. It still deserves its spot. That may change uh, depending on what happens to Legacy when, you know, this new Modern Horizon set comes out and gets some new cards printed um, along with uh, this War of the Spark cards that came out that are making change that people are making changes with. But anyway... Um, I have four copies of Swords to Plowshares, pretty typical. Um, I don't think this changes much. Some people might play three and like one in the board, three in the main. I I just play the four. It was even a point where I used to play one copy of Path to Exile as well. The, when the removal just needed to be that high, it was with elves everywhere. And I mean, that's changed a little bit now, but um, my one of Council's Judgment, just to catch all, I mean, we, you know, this just to catch all card. True Name Nemesis gets rid of, gets rid of Opposing Planeswalkers, anything with Hexproof doesn't matter, it's very convenient, very, very, very powerful. Three mana is a little clunky, but it does what it does, it does one thing, but it does it really well, and it's very, very worth it. Uh, two copies of Terminus, I play the other two in my board, um, that was a change I made a while back when Elves uh, kind of stopped seeing as much play when they banned Deathrite Shaman. Um... I still like Terminus a lot. It still just takes care of things like True Name as well and stuff. It's just a nice catch-all. One mana board wipe. Um, harder to set it up without top. Not impossible, though. Uh, sometimes one mana board wipes are just powerful even when they're random. So, yeah. Uh, four copies of Force of Will. Uh, 
sometimes I, there was a point where I played three when there wasn't really a lot of sneak and show or Omni Tell or anything like that. No, when there was less combo around, I played two or three in my main deck, boarded the other ones. Now I'm back to four, uh, seen a little bit of more reason to play the four. I played against more show and tell players recently. I think it's just kind of a necessity. Is we can argue as much as we want that a five mana counter spell is bad, and we're we're correct. It's bad. You know, and also removing a card from your hand and paying a life is bad too, but it's a necessary evil, sadly. So still a very powerful card. Um, again, necessity. I play three copies of Counterspell. Now, this is something where people give me a lot of crap that they think two is the most that you should play. And you know what? They're probably not wrong. And this is one of those situations where I feel like they, I, I, I made a choice that I felt was correct and it might need to get changed. I've had a lot of good experience, though, with 3. 3 has been very nice. Along with Snapcaster Mage, it really... Just, I mean, the only thing better than Counterspell is Mana Drain, but we're not going to talk about that. Basically, this is the Counterspell. This gets rid of anything. Almost anything. Not Abrupt Decay, but that's besides the point. Having 3 of these is just very convenient and very powerful and very, 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 very uh, reliable. I like it a lot. I might go down to 2. We'll see. I... I just like a personal grape, I don't want to, but um, uh, before I move into like the cantrips and stuff, I want to talk about, I have one copy of this in my main deck. Now I'm not playing red. I, I gave up on red. I play tested with red a long time ago. I stuck with blue white mainly just for its efficiency and its consistency. Um, and that's, you know, you could argue, I mean, pyroblast and stuff like that, that is very powerful and it has its reasons. And I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue that, but I like playing, back to basics because you just you get so many games and so many wins because of it like so many people just can't get around this card they legacy and even modern too is just very greedy people are so greedy with their mana bases they're playing three color decks half the time they they have two basics at most in their deck it's ridiculous and they get hosed by cards like wasteland back to basics etc etc you you can't underestimate the power of a card like Back to Basics. I mean, Blood Moon, same thing. You 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 build greedy decks and you get hated by cards like Blood Moon, Back to Basics, and stuff. But anyway, I play two. I play one in the main, one in the board. This is a, set, a change I made a few weeks ago. I don't think it's correct. I think I just need to either play both my basics in the main and just get rid of counterbalance, maybe, or just cut both of these to the board and keep the counterbalances in the main. I, I by the way, I have a third counterbalance in my sideboard. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm still figuring this out. But anyway, still, regardless, broken card, very powerful. Can't go wrong. Um, moving on to my cantrips and stuff, we'll start with Ponder, of course. I mean, four copies of Ponder. I, I There's nothing to say there. Besides Brainstorm and Preordain, it's just another one of your broken cantrips. Keeps your consistency, allows you to set up your miracles, whether it be with Terminus or if you're playing Entreat the Angels. I'm not playing anymore Entreat the Angels. I might go back to playing one. We'll see again with playtesting. I'm um, trying to get ready for SCG team event in Philly this coming July, if I'm correct. With the, I have to talk with my teammates and see what they think. Um, but I might cut like the Venser and just play like Entreat because obviously that's just better than Venser. But anyway. Still, ponder. Just set your deck up. It allows you to play 20. I play 20 lands total in my deck. Eight of them are fetches. I used to play nine fetches. I'll we'll get to that in a minute. Four ponders. Four ponders. Not three. Not five. Not two. Not seven. Four ponders. No reason not to. Uh, same exact thing I'm, I just said for this. Four brainstorm. There's no reason not to. It allows you to set up your miracles, etc., etc. You just can't go wrong. Sorry if you guys are seeing and hearing that vibration. I forgot to set my phone to silent. Because I never learn, and I'm retarded. Anyway, Brainstorm. Christopher Rush artwork. This is the only one you're allowed to play. has to be white-bordered. Um, if it's not white-bordered and the sleeves aren't grimy, you're doing it wrong, and you need to talk to a therapist or something. Anyway, um, yeah, four Brainstorms. Broken. Most Probably besides Ancestral Recall and Time Walk and stuff, one of the most bust, the most busted blue card you can get your hands on. Um, Portent, very unique choice for the Marigolds deck. It is ponder, but it, you draw the card on the next upkeep instead of right after, right when you resolve the spell. You draw it on the next upkeep, not your next upkeep, the next upkeep. It allows you to trigger Miracle off Terminus. Um, other than that, it's just a slow trip. Uh, fun fact, you can target any li any player's library. So there are times where it's actually convenient to like, you know, if you think your opponent can't do anything about it, you just want to be fun and be stupid and you 
mess with their Delver so they can't flip their Delver. I mean, that's obviously not really ideal, but you get my point. You can mess with people's people's cards as well. If most of the time, though, you want to look at your own library. You're, you're really trying to just find what you need. You know, you're a slow deck. You can't afford to let them get carried away. You have to control the game. So, but yeah, I mean, you could play two, maybe even argue to play almost none of them. I love these. I love this card. I think it's great. I play three. Um, I might go down to two because I'm only playing two Terminus in my main deck. The, the Miracle part of this deck is pretty much almost non-existent. Uh, it used to be more common, but anyway, still a good card. Important. Another good cantrip. Just, I like it a lot. I'm playing two Predict. Now, this is where these cards might become the Narsets. I'm not sure. My buddy builds built a similar deck to mine. He played Stoneblade for a while. Played, you know, same basically the same exact deck, but instead of playing Miracle cards and stuff, he just played Stoneforge Mystics and Batter Skulls. But anyway, this card's really good, um, especially when you know what's going on. You choose a card name, then target player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. If you chose correctly, you draw two, otherwise you draw one. So you can use Portent, you can look at their deck, you look at the top card in their deck, or use Jace to look at the top card of their deck. Name your cast to predict, name that card, mill it to their graveyard. If you don't want them to have it, you draw two cards, or you can just look at your own and name your own card and mill your own card. Uh, very good card. In a blind situation, it's still two mana draw a card. Doesn't feel that great, but it's fine. Uh, it is instant speed. Can't go wrong. I think it's great. It might become that Narset. We'll see. Um, okay, now we'll get to the lands. I showed you the Caracas earlier. I play one copy of Tundra. I used to play two. I just play the one. I really never been in the situation where I needed to. And honestly, being wasteland proof and back to basics proof and blood moon proof is a huge, in my opinion, in my opinion, it's a huge freaking value in this format. Um, I feel like you can't go wrong. It's, it's important to have one. You never know when you might need it. You know, I play four flooded strand and I play four polluted Delta. Uh, you know, you can't get white with polluted Delta. Um, so being able to grab that, Tundra when you need it in the pinch is great. Uh, half the time, I really never even use it. It really, you just don't... I mean, you could argue that if you were trying to be on like more of a budget, you could just skip out on it altogether. I, I haven't playtested without a Tundra before, but I mean, that's that's a point you could maybe maybe make. But anyway, four, four Strand, four Delta, just typical. I mean, I used to play one copy of like Marsh Flats or something, but I just never really needed the ninth fetch land. I'd rather have eight fetch lands. And extra basics. I play a crap ton of basics. People give me a little gripe for it. Like again, I've never needed to not play it or not play so many basics. I have four planes. I have is it six six islands. Um, again, white border. You got to go white border with your islands. It's you just if you're not you just can't play legacy if you don't. Um, you could argue that my mana base is probably the most wonkiest part of my deck and people kind of look at me like I'm weird, but honestly it's, it's, it works out really well for me. I've never had too many problems mana base wise. Um, we'll look at the sideboard. I do have the sideboard here. I didn't lay it out yet, but again, just an overall, this is my shell. It, changes maybe be made um, in the future. If I make changes, maybe I'll, I'll make another video if anyone actually wants to see it and I'll kind of just outline the little tiny things I changed here and there and how my results are. I haven't played much recently, so I don't have much to say right now, but hopefully when I get to that event in, in July, I can have this deck tweaked and ready for it. And I'll make a video about that then, but real quick, uh, old, old school card here, uh, peacekeeper, very odd choice. I love this card. Harken back to Reed Duke when he used to play miracles years ago. Um, he played this in his sideboard. I love this card. It is three mana, one, one. During your upkeep, you pay one in white or you bury it. In case people don't know what that means, you uh, sacrifice it, I think, is the correct term. It's supposed to be sacrifice. Um, creatures can't attack. Uh, again, it, it's a little weird to have it because I already have two terminus in the main and two in the board, and that takes care of creatures. But honestly, I've just had some really nice situations where this card really comes in handy. Um, there's just some decks that couldn't deal with it, like... Honestly, against elves, they most of the time they had nothing they could do. They, I would play this card and they literally just couldn't get around it. Um, there were some people at one point they played Shaman of the Pack in their deck, an elf deck, so they could get around it because they didn't need to attack with that card. But regardless, I love this card. It does what it does and it does it well. Uh, I probably would say, like, depending on your meta, you might not need this kind of card. It seems a little, it's a bit of a weird choice. But anyway, great card. I love it. Uh, Donato's artwork, amazing. He's a great artist. Anyway, um, anyway, yeah, so that's just that. Uh, next up, two copies of Pithing Needle. Not much to say here. I love Pithing Needle. It's very powerful. Um, 
By the way, it's not pithing, it is pithing. I've, I've been over this with people, in case anyone out there is getting irritated hearing me say it. Pithing needle. Um, very powerful. Uh, there was times where, you know, someone surgically extracted my Jace's, so I had to pithing needle naming Jace. It didn't hurt me because they surgically extracted them already. And just like weird, weird situations where this card's very powerful. You shut down their car, their planeswalkers, whether it be like Liliana or like I said, for example, if you don't have a Jace in hand anyway, or if they rip them out of your deck, you can just pithing needle named Jace. You shut their Jace's down, um, shut their Liliana's down. You, uh, you, sh you can shut down fetch lands. It's hysterical. Uh, most of the time for me, it, almost always, I've literally been using this card against like Liliana type. Liliana the Veil, naming Liliana the Veil, because those discard decks just destroy me. I don't have a way to get around it. So this really helps. It's a very powerful card. Um, there might be, it might fall out of favor here and there. I don't, I haven't played against a lot of Liliana recently, um, but I also haven't played much recently. So this card might go down to like one or no copies in favor of something else. But as of right now, great mainstay, catch all, great cyborg card from almost any format um, at a 10. Uh, very powerful. Um, next up, two disenchants. Again, just destroy target artifact or enchant it, two mana, not much to say. Used to be wear tear years ago. When people played red in their miracles decks. I played wear tear when I play tested with red a long time ago. Wear tear is very powerful. With counterbalance, it was also very powerful because it was a split card that had a side that cost two and a side that cost one, and it would counter a one or a two drop. They've changed that rule recently. It now counts as a total, so it's a three. It's not very useful. Um, but disenchant, great card. Just catch all, destroy and target artifact or enchantment. Any any type of card that's giving you problems. Trinisphere, Chaos of the Void, anything. Very, very great. Very, very powerful. Love it. Also, again, Donato artwork. You got to play with this one. It is Black Border, sadly. It is a problem, I know, but we'll get over that because I like Donato's artwork. So, next up, rest in peace. The best graveyard hate card there is. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care about Surgical. I don't care about Leyline in the Void. I don't care. Well, I like Relic. I like those cards too. I like, I like Surgical and Leyline, but this is just, I mean, I'm in white. This is the best overall graveyard hate. It's just fine. It's just it's amazing. It does what it does, like I've said many times, and it does it well. Two mana, exile graveyards, and then keep things from going into graveyards. Uh, I, I mean, dredge, obviously, it's good. Lands, pretty good. Um, uh, st Storm sometimes very good. I mean, it's just it has a lot of application. It's good in modern too. I think this is great against like the Phoenix decks and stuff. Then some of the Storm decks that have been around, uh, it, it dredge as well. Again, just a catch-all. It's just amazing. I love it. Can't go wrong. Uh, the extra copy of Council Judgment is a one of. The other ones in the main deck. Again, just a catch-all card. Perfect. There's the other two Terminus. Can't go wrong. Just in case. And last but not least. Two copies of Containment Priest. This one, I originally was only playing one or none for the most part. But then the show and tell decks started coming around. And this card is just very convenient to have. Um, I was actually, some people were, my buddy Todd that I have, he was actually specking that this card might get reprinted in Modern Horizons into Modern. And you could start hosing like collected company decks and stuff like elves and whatnot. But anyway, this card is very powerful. You keep stuff from coming back when you don't want it to. Uh, dredge. I think, yeah, against Dredge, it works well. Uh, show and tell, etc. Just an overall good card to have. Efficient. It's also a beat stick. It's a 2-mana two 2-2. Two -two. It's just like Snapcash is a 2-mana two 2-1, two but still, 2-mana for a 2-2, two -two and you beat their face if they don't, you know, do anything with anything else. So, it's uh, it's relevant. It is very relevant. I like it a lot. Also, it has Flash, which is why it's very good. So, yeah. Some re protection requires a bit of finesse. Okay, so anyway, that's the deck tech. Um, I appreciate anybody who's still watching. Um, like I said, if anyone actually cares, I'll keep people clued in to uh, what's going on with this deck, and we'll see uh, when I talk to my teammates about what changes we should make. I think, like I said, I already kind of know where I want to go. The Venser thing's kind of old school and needs to probably leave. Um, maybe the counter spells get cut down. I maybe either go all in or not at all on the back to basics. We'll see. Um, I still love counterbalance so much. I don't want to get rid of it, but... I got to stop being too casual and personal on my deck and just try to build it the way it should be built. So thank you, everybody. I appreciate your time and take care.